Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna help you pass your first certification. Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMagicKey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to pass the A+. So there's a lot of different YouTubers, a lot of different courses, a lot of different programs out there that cover A+. You may be kind of confused. Is this for me? Should I take the exam? So on and so forth. So the A plus is a two part exam, right? So you got to take both parts to be fully certified. If you pass one, don't pass the other. No A plus. Pass the first part, fail the second part. No A plus. Got to pass both of them to be fully certified. So A plus is an awesome certification because if you look on Indeed, if you look on LinkedIn, if you look on any of these job forums or job software places or job apps, you actually see a lot of positions that actually ask for the A+. So that's why a lot of the students in the Zero to IT Hero program like the program because it includes A+. That's one of the great things about certifications is before you even start your journey, before you start studying, you can actually see, okay, these are some of the jobs that I could possibly land if I get certified. Now, of course, experience is something that comes into play. Your network comes into play, how your interview comes into play, so on and so forth. What's understood shouldn't have to be said. If you don't understand that, go watch some of the 400 plus other videos that I got on this channel, right? So when you get the A+, it'll open up a lot of opportunities and it'll open up a lot of the doors that may be shut if you don't have it, right? So with that being said, in this quick little quiz and this quick little demonstration, I'll kind of give you some of the question types that you may run across on the actual exam. So we'll go through it as a family. I'll give you the question, see if you can figure it out on your own. If you can't, we'll figure it out together. I'll tell you what the answer is and why that is the answer. The only cost that you have to do, the only price of admission, like this video, share with two people, and subscribe to the channel. The most important part is sharing it to a couple of different social medias just so we can get this message out to more people, so we can get more people into tech and we can help as many people as possible. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds to do that. All right, gang, let's get straight into the first question. So what we're talking about here is RoboCopy or robust file copy. So when you're using RoboCopy, a lot of times you can eliminate some of the errors that may happen if you're using a new technology file system. And also the RoboCopy command removes and replaces all other commands. The usage of multi-threading makes it much faster than standard copy and also xCopy. Microsoft Windows file replication command is also known as robust file copy or simply called RoboCopy. It uses the concept of time stamp and data stamp for incomplete file transfer that help and tolerate network interruption. It knows where to start from using that recovery record, having the date and time stamp information. RoboCopy eliminates the chance of failure as it skips NTFS junction points as NTFS happens to cause infinite loops. RoboCopy replaces all other copy commands with multiple exceptional features. The concept used in RoboCopy is to copy multiple files simultaneously using multi-threading. The usage of multi-threading makes it much faster than standard copy and xCopy. So we're going to talk about a concept called subnetting. Subnetting is super important if you don't want to waste a bunch of IPs. So if you don't subnet, you're going to be having a bunch of unused IP addresses for networks that may not need that many IP addresses. So long story super short, 
a subnetting calculator, a subnetter, you, when you subnet, you just creating subnetworks from bigger networks. So creating smaller networks from a larger network. A subnet is a smaller network within a network that requires a subnet mass. Subnetting is a process of dividing a network into two or more subnets. Its primary function is to make the routing of data within a network more sufficient and secure. Subnetting also helps make better use of IPv version 4 addresses. All right, so a brute force attack is a type of attack that uses brute force. I'm gonna guess your password as many times as I can. I'm gonna use a bunch of different combinations, a bunch of different stuff, and I'm gonna keep on guessing it for an infinite amount of time. Now, a dictionary attack actually looks for dictionary words inside your password. So it'll start at letter A and go all the way down to the last word in the dictionary to see if any of those are your password. TKIP uses the same underlying mechanism as WEP which opens it up to a lot of the same vulnerabilities. TKIP or Temporal Key Integrity Protocol is an encryption protocol included as part of the IEEE 802.11 standard for wireless LANs. It was designed to provide more secure encryption than notoriously weak wired equivalent privacy or WEP, the original WLAN security protocol. So what we're talking about now is an on-path attack or a man-in-the-middle attack. On-path, man-in-the-middle, man-in-the-middle, on-path. The newer term for man-in-the-middle is on-path. So either one of these can be used interchangeably, but just remember if you're on the exam, if it says on-path, it's talking about a man in the middle. So either one of these, whichever one you want to use, it's the same thing, just a different terminology. So on-path, it puts a piece of software, it puts a person, it puts something on the path of the data or whatever you're trying to do, and something that can intercept the information, something that can manipulate the information, something that can stop the information. Man in the middle can be a little bit easier to conceptualize, to visualize. It's literally something in the middle between you and your destination to either, like I said, transform the data, take the data, steal the data, so on and so forth. On-path attacks, formerly known as man in the middle, place themselves in between two devices, often a user device and a server, and intercepts or modifies communications between the two. n is the first frequency, first protocol to incorporate MIMO or multiple input, multiple output types of technology and routers. Wireless N was developed in 2009 to improve speeds, reliability, and extend the range of wireless transmissions. It was the first standard to use MIMO. MIMO products use a series of antennas to receive more data from one device at a time which results in faster data transmissions. Hey gang, I want you to do something really quick. I want you to watch this last video. It should be popping up uh, somewhere around here that's gonna help you get certified and actually land a tech gig. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And other than that, I'll see you in class.